and are the people who have helped build San Francisco. So let's go. The first is the Gerstel family. And in a minute, I will show you a picture why he would be very, very important. But you see, his daughters married brothers. The others married people. And when you start documenting the names, you get the names of all the famous social families of the city of San Francisco. The next picture. Here you have William Hawes. There were two sisters who lived on Franklin, and they had a niece, Bertha. The two sisters married very well. One married Sloss, the man on the horseback, and the other married, uh, uh, I forget for a minute, I'll, I'll think of it. And she married a Haas. Their children married among the group. Because what happened was, it became like a social club. And it had certain rules of etiquette that you had to behave in a certain way. You had to, to contribute to the community. Three, you had to belong to Temple Emanuel. You see? So that there was a pattern of social consciousness. The women went into the groups of, that you asked about, Steve, and the men did that, plus going into the business community of San Francisco. Hmm. Okay, the next picture. This is a house you can see to this day, oh, yeah. the Haas House at the corner of California and Franklin. Today it's where the Institute of Archaeology, uh, of uh, Architecture, is housed. Okay. Now, this gentleman here, Sig Stern, and is a man who really built the, the uh, Levi industry. What happened was Levi Strauss died childless, never married, and his sister inherited, and she had a number of children, and they took over the business. One of them was C, and he married the, his wife over here. And today, when Sig died, you go to the Stern Grove. She gave that property to the city, set it up so that it's free, and so that nobody can be denied. She built the stage and all the necessary equipment that was there. Okay. Her daughter, their daughter, is a, married a Haas, and that's another big name. And, Peter and, uh, and William Jr. became two of the famous ones. And when you walk down at the Chrissy Field in that walk, they're the ones who established it, you see. The Zellerbach family, an interesting story, because when they came, the founders came to, uh, Abraham came to the West Coast. He came to Sacramento and he went into business there. But then the business couldn't afford two families. He was in partnership. So they flipped the coin and Abraham lost mm. and moved to San Francisco and built the second largest paper company in the world. Mm. And the man who was responsible for that development was Isidore. When I did my research and went through some of the family papers, at the time of the writing and of, the, of their report, they had already given $60 million to causes in the San Francisco area. When you go to, Ber to Berkeley, to the university, Zellerbach Auditorium. All right, let's go to the next one. Another family name at the Dinklespiels. This is the Dinklespiel wedding. But you have the Elmans and the Urbans and the Hellers. The big law firms connected with Wells Fargo Bank. There's a very important book on the story of the Hellmans, which Florence Dinklespiel 
there happened to write. And she was with me when I created this book. And uh, you know the story, and in the story of the helmet. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you when I come to it. In a minute. All right. The Fleischacker family. Honest Abraham. When his ship burned down, the people gathered together and gave money to rebuild his business. Because he helped them. His two children are instrumental. One, the zoo of San Francisco. And the other is the symphony orchestra. Okay. You know the M B M J B cat coffee yeah. cat. Yeah. The Brandenstein family. He started out as a gold miner, but didn't last very long because he saw where the money was to be made, and today it's become an international company. And I put in there Drummond Davis Streets. That's where their building was. It went all the way through. Okay. Let's go to the next. one. Sutro Heights, Adolf Sutro, that's the swimming pool. I wish it were there today. It burned down when yeah. everything burned at that area. Okay. Now, the rescue of Seward's Folly. Well, here's Mr. Gerstel in the center. Remember Gerstel? And there's Dr. Sloss. They're now business people. And what happened was, that the United States bought Alaska for $5 million from the Russians. And it was a boondoggle. They didn't know what to do with it. Mm. So these people, through the Alaska Company, developed a fur and fishing industry and lumber industry and made it a success. And one of the ways they did it is by taking care of the native people of the land. They built schools for them, houses for them, health institutions, the whole rigmarole. They took care of their people. Okay. And here is a gentleman who became a congressman, Julius Kahn, and it was his wife of Mary Goldsmith, the descendant of Mary Goldsmith. It was his wife who was his secretary, and when he died, she took over and was elected until 1936, when you had the Roosevelt sweep hmm. of, the, for, of the Democrats over the Republicans. The community was basically a Republican community at that time. Wow. Okay. Now, we had a few guys that uh, we're not so proud of, but you have to mention them. Adolf Roof. He was a, well, we have, uh, we have our cases today. Uh, he became like the, the wheeler dealer of political power. He sold offices, bought this and bought that. And if you wanted to be anybody, you had to pay him under the table. And then it wasn't so under the table. And they caught him. And they convicted him. And he went to San Quentin. The interesting thing also is that in 1906, when we had the earthquake, the courthouse had been destroyed. So where did they meet? They met in Sharon, Israel, which was one of the few big buildings that remained in the city, untouched. Today, they have to retrofit it for $20 million. But that's another story. And so his parents were members of that congregation and they sat and watched in that congregation their son being convicted. Okay, let's go to the next one. Well, Gertrude Stein comes up at this point. If you just go up the street here and go over a little bit, you'll see a big square with names on it. And there are four Jewish names in there, recognition of people from this area. And what was Harriet Lane Levy over here? She wrote a book called 920 O'Farrell. If you want to read Victorian English exquisite, read that book. I read it, I couldn't believe it. 
Well, Harriet at 16 went off to college. She wanted to.